Hey guys, and uh, welcome to the garage. A guy went ahead um, Saturday morning and went to the LKQ and snagged uh, this puppy up right here, along with um, two jack stands and pair of rear shocks. These are Philistines. I think they're 4600. I don't know. But anyway, today's video would be removing the old rear diff and I'm gonna take you guys along with me every step of the way because I couldn't find any step by step of removing a rear end out of a uh, GMT 400 pickup. This also applies to your Tahoe's, Suburban, Silverado pickups, 2500, 3500's, CK, I don't care. It would apply to pretty much every single one of them and um, let's get started shall we? First step that I'm going to take, though, is um, take out everything that's in the bed, including the uh, camper shell, just to get as much weight off of the bed as possible. I already took the spare wheels out and all of that yesterday. So we'll go ahead and fi finish taking out all of this stuff today. So a guy took the uh, camper shell, slid her back, and in the backyard over there. Um, took out everything in the bed just to keep the weight out of it as much as possible so when I come to support the vehicle it'll be a little bit safer to rely on the weight of the engine to keep the truck tilted this way when we're working on it. So it's the side of the truck will be tilted this way like a, a dragster so to speak so we can uh, snip her in real quick but first of all we're gonna snip the old one out and go from there up the rig and supported her on jack stands specifically these are northern tool six ton jack stands try to zoom on it I don't know if you can see but I promise it says six ton there and it's got these safety pins just in case if these were to fail because the Harbor Freight ones don't have that I'm calling you out Harbor Freight but yeah I got these safety pins just so this truck won't fall over me and kill me. And I have that slightly supported over there at the diff by the uh, jack. And now we're going to go ahead and start working on it. First step you'll have to take is to take off the back wheels, obviously, so you can be able to drop the rear end without any problems. And to do that, I've got a tip for you if you're like me and on a low budget and don't have the funds to get power tools. Before you jack up the vehicle, you break every single one of these lug nuts loose while the truck is still on the ground. You take a breaker bar and a 22 millimeter, in this case, put it onto the breaker bar, put it onto the wheel, and while it's on the ground, you put all your weight on it and step on it and that should break them loose but in this case I've already done that so I could just do it this way no need for power tools see and just do the same thing for the rest of them well uh, we got the rear wheels off it's obviously supported on jack stands and bonus tip for you guys that are concerned about safety and everything Number one safety is your jack stands. Number two, we have the jack barely supporting the rear end. And number three, in case all else fails, leave your wheels under the truck. Just in case, if it were to fall down, and let's hope it won't, it'll fall on the wheels before it gets you. And another way to be 99.295% sure, Grab a hold of the vehicle and shake it really good. It is not going anywhere. So now we can declare it safe to work on the truck. The first thing Guy wants to do when uh, he's taking a uh, differential out, you want to take everything 
that's holding it off, starting with the drive shaft. So to do that on the Chevy, see these things right here? This is a 7 16 bolt. There's four of them. One, two, two on the other side. You take them out. I've already loosened them yesterday. So you just take them out. They don't come out all the way, but at least they're loose. You do it to all four of them. You're going to need a wrench because the ratchet won't fit through here. Put it through here somewhere. It's a 7 16 I promise. And just twist it. Then you loosen it the rest of the way. In this case, again, it is not going to be this way on yours. Because if it is, you're either number one in trouble or number two, you took it off beforehand. So that's how you take out the drive shaft from the differential. You don't need to slide it out from the transfer case. You just support it or hang it or something like that. Or just leave it dangling or something. So I'm going to take out the rest of these bolts and get back to you guys when I'm done. Next, you worry about your brake lines. I'm going to detach them from here. I tried on that side saving on these, this other one. But we're probably going to have to get a new one. Take this nut off. You will need a 9 16 wrench. You put it on there, start twisting. But as you can see, I'm going to have to support it somehow. So yeah, you twist this and uh, it should kind of come right off. It's going to aggravate some though. Now while uh, the brake lines are out, both of them in this case, I was able to keep this one where it's at. It doesn't matter if it stays or not. This can come out with the rear differential. It's not going to hurt anything. But we want to save on this one right here. So to kind of get this out of the way, follow. And that's your breather right there. You take a pair of pliers. Go here, and you grip on this little clip, and it kind of wiggles its way out on its own. It needs a little, needs a little wrestling, but you'll get it. You'll get it. Trust me. After I wrestled off this clip right here, this was stuck on here. So what I ended up doing is using a small pry bar. A screwdriver will work too, but obviously it's better to have the right tools. So you grab it and you pry it from all sides until it's up here, then you keep prying and prying. And it comes off. Next step is to remove the shock. See? Those way up there. Those are 13 millimeter. And these are a little confusing, but hear me out. This nut is an 18. Let me zoom in on it real quick. This nut right here, it's 18 and I put a wrench on it and jammed it up against the axle, as you can see. So I can use the ratchet on this side with the 21 millimeter to go ahead and loosen it and your shock should come out easily. I got a quick tip for you guys. If you want to loosen something that's very, very stubborn, if you can't squeeze it down, no matter how hard you try, get some sort of an extension bar. In this case, I'm using a half inch drive extension, the, the longest one I've got, and whatever socket that would go on the end of your ratchet right here. In this case, it's a 24 millimeter. After pry, 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 in this case it's loose, so it's going to be very easy for me. But for you guys, it may vary and will vary. And as you can see right here, it makes it easier for you. And now that we're done and we don't need it no more, we are loosen it the rest of the way. Thank 
cotton bar and you squeeze and you tighten and it won't budge. In this case, I probably would be able to let it slide, but you could always, while you're prying, just give it a whack. Give it a quick whack. And as you can see, it gave it just enough shock to loosen it the rest of the way. bolts for the shock. You got your 13 millimeter on the bottom and your 13 millimeter nut at the top. Be careful now because you might not see this nut if you don't look close. It's on the back side and I'll show it to you after I'm done doing this demonstration right here. So you want to grab a hold of your wrench and your ratchet and just Now, here's the nut I'm talking about. It could be overlooked easily, and all you would do, be doing if you ignore it is you're supposed to be spinning the whole assembly in its place and you're not going to be getting anywhere. In this case, I got this side over here out. Now this side is left. You put your wrench over here. You can just jam it up against somewhere, like I did here, and you just kind of jam it up against something and you put your ratchet and socket on the bolt and you just keep going like I demonstrated earlier. All right so now we popped off the old shock and when we compare it to the shock that I got they ain't the same so we're just gonna end up reusing the old ones for now and returning the new ones. Well uh, both shocks are out now all we have to do now Double check everything. Let's go do that right now. Okay, good, good. Mm. Now, the next thing we need to do is take these U-bolts out. All right, we need to take off the U-bolts. Here's a trick in case you're not able to get an access to any vehicle and you don't have money to go to the auto parts store or whatever and you need lubrication because it's important to lubricate these to make your job a whole lot easier and I already did lubricate them on this side I'm still gonna do them on that side but what I used is old transmission fluid yes you're right I did use old transmission fluid to lubricate these point is, if you can't get access to any vehicle, or you don't have the money to go to the parts store and buy some WD-40 or PB Blaster, just source them off whenever you can find. Even the engine oil dipstick, you can kind of pull it out or whatever and get some oil off of that and lubricate it or whatever. Just do what you got to do. U-bolts and yeah 
definitely pretty much my day in a nutshell. <laughs> you think the sun is bad? Check this out. One, two, and obviously three. <sighs> well, that's one less part we have to take out. Yeah, beat the dirt. Look at this. Yeah, that's gonna need to be taken off too, so <laughs> it can't be dangling here. GMC K1500 aka the GMT 400 uh, platform and we're gonna put the new one in in the next video so stay tuned for that and in the meantime hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did please leave a like comment below for tips and tricks for installing the new one or things you might need to look out for or whatever and if you would have done this a different way hey leave that in the comments below as well this is a YouTube, this is a learning community. I'm not a mechanic by any means. I'm just a car enthusiast slash redneck country boy, whatever you want to call it, that just likes trucks and likes trying to figure stuff out by myself and not have to take it to a shop. So again, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a like for the YouTube algorithm and comment below and see you guys in the next video. Peace out.